Okay, that's cool. So I am so excited to get into this interview with brand new author, Terrence D. Baker. Welcome to the channel, you know, my little humble abode on these here Thank interwebs. You. Thank but you, I'm cool. Clarissa Epps, and I'm going to get into this interview because I'm so excited to talk to you about this book called Delilah's Lap by yes. Terrence Baker. Now, Terrence and I go way, way back. Yes. Some of them yes. photos, I don't want none of y'all to see because <laughs> it was in my look. I don't look like this at Not all. Not at all like that. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. So, because Terrence knew me when I was a kid, literally, yes. growing up at church. Literally a kid. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so. But anyway, but I'm so excited about this book that he just wrote, and I want you guys to hear about it. But Terrence. Yes. Welcome to the show. Can you tell us about the book and what the title Delilah's Lap means? Yes, um, I probably can sum up the, the book itself um, with three words, um, um, decision, choice, and consequence. Mm. I think that's the main, um, the overall um, summary of the book within itself. The thing is, though, I think we have to understand that um, there is a difference between decision and choice you know mm. a decision is a conclusion after consideration okay. a choice is a selection of two or more things um but all of it ends up in a position where you're in a consequence and um the 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 full summary of the latter's lap is the choices and and um decisions that we make put us in consequences but um like much like samson we put ourselves in these positions and then mm. we're in a place where we have to turn to God and say, you know, get me out, please. You know, I done messed up again, you know, get me out. of this. So Delilah's lap is always a place that we put ourselves in and we have to beg and plead for God to get us out, you know, because uh, most of the time we don't have anybody else that can get us out the mess that we've created, but it's a mess that we've created ourselves up. That is the truth, because as I was reading the book, I was like, Ooh. He all up in my little life. I was like, what decisions have I made that were wrong? Because at one point you talk about mistakes versus choices. And I was like, yeah, yeah. some of them was, yes. them was bad choices. Is the way right. That I right. So I'm exactly. curious, you know, with all that in mind, it was very interesting to see that somebody wrote a book in that regard, you know, really challenging those concepts versus mistakes versus bad decisions. But what inspired mm -hmm. you to write this book? Um, um, personal events that, uh, that I've have, have happened in my life, personal mm -hmm. choices and things that, that I have, um, decisions that I've made that put me in messes that I had to turn to. And it, it was just like, it was something that, um, the Holy Spirit just pulled out of me, um, and actually just last year. So if you'd have told me prior to last year that mm -hmm. I could write a book, I would have been like, you, you got your dad on man. I ain't no way in the world. I have to, because, because. I have, you know, um, um, I literally have ADHD, you know, so, so, <laughs> so it's difficult for me to sit still and do anything, you know, so um, um, even, even a lot of times, even when I'm sitting down, I'm patting my foot or I'm, I'm doing shaking my head or something, because a lot of times I'm hearing, you know, music and stuff in my head. So, um, so it's difficult. So I wouldn't have believed that I would be able to sit down long enough to, right. to, do, to, to write a book. So um, it was really surprising to me, but um, um, it's just one of the things that God reveals a lot of times. Uh, and I think that's one of the benefits um, mm -hmm. of serving a God like we serve is because he pulls things out of us a lot of times that we didn't even know we had. Mm -hmm. you know? And this is something I really had no idea. I had no idea. Um, I know, you know, when we was at church, you mm -hmm. know, and, and your, your father would say, you know, he wanted to play, I would write the play. And when he say one of the theme songs for the church, I write a theme song. But I thought it was just something I just did. It wasn't mm. something that, you know, came with a whole lot of concentration, you know. And I'm, 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 try, I'm trying to pull myself back. So go ahead before I start talking for real. I, <laughs> look, there's do be nervous. No, my thing is, I'm curious because I know a lot of people have gone through a lot of experiences yes. where they feel like, you know, oh, wow, like this would be a teachable moment, but they don't write books or they're like, you know, my experiences could really help other people, but they don't write books. So I'm mm -hmm. curious as to what, you know, inspired you to say, I got to get this done. Yeah, it, well, it wasn't just something that it just 
um, it was almost like just the, I, I've heard people say the light that came on, you know, mm. sometimes we, and, and that's literally how it was, you know, as, mm. as because I sat down and I started writing and the, the crazy part is whenever, um, when God gives you an anointing, it flows mm. so well through you until it's almost like you just start doing it and it almost takes over for itself. You know, mm -hmm. so um, when I when I began to pray about it, I just would say, you know, Holy Spirit, speak through my hands. And mm -hmm. so um, when I started typing, I just started typing and it just kept going. And before I knew it, I had like two and three pages. And I'm like, wait a minute, this oh, wow. maybe just maybe, you know, <laughs> you know, but but that's that's the amazing thing about God. You know, he interweaves our our anointings so yeah. well into our lives. Until we don't even realize it's an anointing. It just That's true. And I yeah. really, I know in the book, even you talk more about anointing. Yes. And I want to get into that a little bit later. But mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit more about the book. Because like I told you, I opened it and I was like, oh, wow. Like in the introduction, I was like, I, I'm glad I'm sitting down. Because in the introduction, <laughs> you wrote, I'm going to read this. this. is Let's see, this is like the second page of the introduction. But you wrote... Some of us have even convinced ourselves and others mm -hmm. that the surrender to these actions was uncontrollable because mm -hmm. you're starting to talk about this spirit of lust or what you would call the spirit of Delilah or Delilah's right. lap. Mm -hmm. And you said, this is far from the truth because both lust and desire are completely under our own dictation. Yes. And I was reading it, I was like, wow. So I'm <laughs> curious as to what brought about that understanding for you. Um, it was something that um, I, I think is something that we all probably recognize, but mm -hmm. most of the time, whenever we do something that's um, out of character, do something that we got caught in and we don't want to, you know, we that we really didn't want to get caught in, we're always mm -hmm. looking for somebody else to either bring in with us yes. or to blame for it, you yeah. know, but um, and I think most of the time when you become a mature adult, you recognize that I am the blame for this, you know, I mean, from day one, when you start to speak about Adam and Eve, you know, when, yeah. when God came back in the garden and he was like, you know, what you do? And he was like, Adam was like, uh-uh, me, she <laughs> right. did this, you know, it was her that got, you know, because naturally we're looking for somebody to carry the weight of the blame mm -hmm. with us. And so when the weight falls on our shoulder, we don't want all that weight, you know, mm -hmm. so we want to, to throw it off to somebody else. And when we start talking about lust and desires, you know, those things, when we get caught up in it, um, a lot of times we just want somebody to take some of the weight off of our shoulders mm -hmm. um, of it. And we don't want to be by ourselves right. when, 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 the, when everything hits the fan, you know, so um, that's, that's where, that's where it led, I, like, like I said, I just believe it's something that we all know. Mm -hmm. We all recognize, and you know. But you said it out loud, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most of the time, we don't want to say that. We want <laughs> right. to keep that hidden, because that's usually our go-to. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. To to you know, if, if I get caught up in something, that's my go-to to act ignorant. You know, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so and that's that's the go-to that 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 kind of gives us a little way out. But um, yeah, like you said, I just put it down on paper. That's all. Right. Well, I'm glad you called it out because listen, somebody had to tell the truth. Okay. So let, <laughs> let me let me ask you about this other thing because you were starting to talk about anointings. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to talk about that because in chapter okay. three, you okay. talk a lot about anointing. So I'm looking at, let's see, page 16, actually. Mm -hmm. You wrote that the party crashers come because of uh, what well, the title is party crashers. <laughs> party crashers. But the party crashers come because of a destructive attraction to our anointing. Yes. but they still need someone to unlock the door. Sure. And I was like, ooh, that is very true because that's what changes the game. Like uh, it goes back to this decision and choice that you talked about exactly. and somebody unlocking the door. But I'm curious as to when has this happened in your life and what advice do you have for people who are trying to get back on track? Um, um, well, it's, it's happened for me. It's, it's happened on several different occasions in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, because um, one of the things I think we misunderstand, um, well, some of us anyway, misunderstand is that the, the enemy, Satan doesn't have the ability to read our minds, but mm -hmm. he can read our habits. You right. know what I'm saying? If, 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 if I hear you pray and you say, you know, God, I want a man to come in here with a red shirt and white sneakers, and this is going to be my husband. If I hear you say that, mm -hmm. I can pick that out myself. I can go put on a red shirt and, and white sneakers 
and give you the illusion that it's something that this is what you have been praying for. You know, and, and, and so so many times I think we don't recognize that the enemy has studied us mm. and he's watched us down through the years. And so he recognizes those who has the potential of having a special anointing. Mm. You become an instant target once he recognizes that. And he starts to send, you know, the, the, the demons and the imps after you at that point in time. And usually when I, when, like when I speak of the person who has to unlock the door, this mm. is usually somebody that you've gotten a relationship with. This is somebody that you're friends with. And yes. they usually will betray you. Jesus had a Delilah. Mm. You know, we call him Judas. Right. You know, but, but um, Judas unlocked the door. He unlocked the door with, with a kiss. I mean, because when they came looking for Jesus, you know, they asked, you know, who's Jesus? Right. You know, and 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 his signal was, I'm going to kiss him, you know. So that was the door being unlocked to let in the party crashes. But mm -hmm. for those of that who get caught in these situations, it's only one way back, you know, to get back mm -hmm. on track. And that's Father, forgive me. Mm -hmm. But the thing we always have to remember when we ask God to forgive us for our sins or for whatever it is that we're asking forgiveness for, we have to forgive uh, forgive ourselves. Because most of the time, after you've crossed that line of asking God to forgive you, as long as your heart and your word matches together, and, and only God knows that for real, as long as that matches together, God forgives you. And he's willing to let this go. Mm, the enemy true. sneaks back in to say, remember when you did this? You know, you did that right mm. there. And we have trouble just letting go because we have a knack and a desire to feel like we must continue to be punished over and over and over again. That's yeah. true. And I remember you, and I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm so no, excited. Crazy. Like, I got to ask you, because you, what you're talking about, I remember reading about in that last chapter about mm -hmm. the breadcrumb trail. Yes. Because you you had this line where, hold on, let me get to it. Okay, it says, uh, you can stand there in your pride and not be forgiven. Yes. Or you can put that pride away and repent no mm -hmm. matter how many times you messed up. Yeah. And you wrote that these words have stayed with you your entire life. Yes. So I'm curious yeah. about when that, when was the time when that happened to you? For for me, any time that I've done wrong, because I'm a PK, you know, and, and I know you understand about being a preacher's kid, because mm -hmm. of that, we're right. taught, yeah, <laughs> um, we're taught and we were raised in an environment that even if we weren't listening and even if we were playing in the back and weren't paying attention to what's going on, seeds were being planted in our head and in our hearts that, yes. you know, sometimes, you know, even now, and even now at my age now, that sometimes I might say something and I might even, might not even remember how did I even get that. I don't remember mm. reading that, but a lot of times mm. it's because seeds and things were planted right. as a child that have grown. But one of the benefits, um, one of the best benefits of, you know, um, being a PK is because you are in that environment, you know, for much of your childhood. Now, the pro a lot of times the problem with us as being PKs is that when we finally get freedom, we overdo, you know, because we 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 want to yeah, make up for it. Yes, yes. We want the sex, yeah, and drugs and rock and roll all at one time. You know, <laughs> everybody else has had time. To, to, to decide, I like this, I don't like this, I'll move on to this. You know, we finally get out of the church and we want everything. Give me everything now. You know, so, right, I want all the promises. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. And, and so we we tend to overdo. And so um, the, 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 though we do overdo and though we um, often carry things to the extreme, because mm. of those seeds and things that were planted in us, in our younger, in our childhood, our childhood ages, when we weren't paying attention and we weren't laughing and joking in the back of the church with our friends, we mm. still have that in the back of our mind that all I have to do is line back up and get myself back in order and ask God to forgive me. But we do recognize, you know, like I said, your word and, 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 and your heart has to line up. You can't fool God. You know, that's there's no way of, of tricking him into thinking, you know, because I said this, this is what I really mean. He knows, you know, that's so true. And I know that you write in the book too about how your mom and your grandma really helped you to have that understanding. They were some of the key people who yes. planted those seeds. 
But listen, yeah. y'all, I know because I was reading the book and I've been following the Facebook page. It's a shameless plug for the Facebook page that Terrence the hell back on some of these answers to these questions. And he got some stories that he can share that really line up with, uh, you know, some experiences he's had in his life that relate to Delilah's lab mm -hmm. and just some, you know, other experiences that he can share that will really encourage you. But listen, you can't get it all in this little interview. You will have to read the book. And you will have to go to the Facebook page. But Terrence, tell people where they can get a copy of the book. Um, they can get a copy of the book from um, Amazon.com. Um, that's one of the um, the major places. Um, um, and Walmart.com. And, you know, that's why I was I'm really excited about Walmart. Because, <laughs> you know, I know you saw the video. Last. I'm excited about Walmart because Walmart was a big thing to me, you know, because coming from the country, you know, Walmart was like the biggest store we had. So it's a big deal for me to be in Walmart, you know. So it is, um, it's a big deal though, major retail, man. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. But you know, for me, it was just, you know, just the fact it was Walmart. But yeah, I didn't get Amazon, Walmart, and Barnes and Nobles. But if you go to Google and just type in um Delilah's Lap by Terrence Baker, um, it's a whole list of, of places you can get the book from. Yes, and we'll definitely put the links to those in the uh, description of the YouTube video. Check that out. But listen, Terrence, thanks for hanging out. Y'all definitely get your copy of Delilah's Lap because it's going to bless you and it's going to really make you think a lot about your life and your choices.